I have to stop this because Rune decided to be helpful. Rune decided to be helpful and play all sorts of music similar to the one I just played. <laughs> and I don't want it to do that right now. It's on the queue, right? So it's, Rune is a nice feature, can be nice unless you're doing a talk on audio and you don't want to be interrupted. Where if you've run out of stuff to play, it figures, well, you like that, you might like whatever this next thing is that I can't see at this angle. It's a feature called Rune Radio that it's a bit of a misnomer, but it's helpful. And you can't hear me in the back because I don't have a microphone on. But, all right, check, 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 check. All right, we're good. Uh, cool. So I promised that I would talk to you a little bit about streaming history. How in the world do we get here to begin with? Streaming's not new, so why are we talking about it now? I talked about that already. Here's a definition that I looked up on a reliable source, pcmag.com. Streaming is, a, and, I, and I use this definition because I don't want anybody to throw anything at me. If you don't like mine, you can just be mad at them. Streaming is a one-way audio transmission over a data network. Unlike music files that are downloaded and played at any time in the future, like our download services, HD tracks, and whatever else, a stream song is played immediately after a small amount of audio data is received. And the song file is not stored permanently on the destination device. There are some exceptions, but you get the idea. And this is why maybe sometimes you have trouble. If that small part that streamed before playback begins is too small, um, and your internet connection is choppy, or the network, the local network transport is choppy in your house, then you won't be very happy with that experience. But that is the official definition. But I'll give you a little bit of history. So, the band Severe Tire Damage. Anybody fans? Severe Tire Damage? I, I don't like the concept. I haven't heard the band. But the band Severe Tire Damage was the first group to perform live on the internet. On June 24th, 1993, the band was playing a gig at Xerox Park, of course, while streaming, while everywhere in the build, streaming everywhere in the band, or sorry, while streaming everywhere in the building um, and on the internet uh, as far away as Melbourne. Um, as proof of the park's technology, the band's performance was broadcast and, and could see, be seen all over the world. In a March 2017 interview, uh, let me fast forward past it. So this, th this was kind of the first experiment. They streamed like a postage stamp size, like 152 by 76 pixel video to go along with the audio. It used half of the bandwidth of the internet at that time. That's how many people watched. And the audio quality was way worse than an analog telephone uh, connection. <laughs> now, I actually miss analog phones. The, the voice quality that we had back then when you had like an analog, a true analog phone, although there was some digital switching that probably went on in the background, versus what you get today with a cell phone is so much nicer, but that's uh, progress for you. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's, how we, that's how it started, and it's come a super long way since then. Um, we're watching 4K video, HDR stuff in our houses. We've got multiple 4K streams. And everybody's like, oh, do we have enough space for high-res audio? Yeah, you do. You're fine. Um, if, you're, if you're living in the Bay Area and you don't have high-res audio, uh, come talk to me. We'll see if we can get some, let's get some help. Um, my mouse pointer's in the way. How embarrassing. Move. There you go. All right, cool. Uh, definitions. So there are a few different kinds of streaming. Um, there's on-demand streaming versus live streaming. So if you've watched a movie on Netflix ever before, you were probably using on-demand streaming. It's, you know, you can start the movie anytime you want. You can start the song anytime you want. Live streaming is more like kind of a radio station or uh, like a live broadcast of a political event or whatever. Um, you know, you, you, if you want to start watching it, you've got to start when the stream starts. Um, you don't get to, um, you might be able to pause the stream once it starts and kind of buffer it a little bit, um, but you're not able to control when it starts. You don't have control over that. So uh, two different types. Um, most of the time for us audiophiles, we're interested in kind of the on-demand uh, type. We want, if I want to play a song, if I wanted to play that song for you, I don't want to say, okay, let's wait, we're going to play that song in exactly, you know, 10 minutes or whatever when, it's, when it comes around. We want to be able to play it whenever we want to. Um, there's internet streaming versus local streaming. Some people say, well, streaming is only over the internet. You don't do streaming inside your house. I don't, I don't think I really agree. And if we take a look at that PC mag definition, I think streaming is something that we can now do inside of our home networks. Remember I told you you have to have one of those things and once you do, it's pretty powerful. So uh, internet, audio transmissions over the public internet, in my case over my crappy USB cable going to my phone over here. Um, hopefully your home network connection is way more robust than that. Um, you did notice that we didn't have any dropouts during that song, right? That's crazy. Um, so it is possible. 
um, local audio transmission among devices within your home, so not uh, not escaping the borders of your home, except maybe possibly stray Wi-Fi things that get out and bother your neighbors. Um, that's kind of local streaming, and that's most of what we're doing here, especially if I'm playing anything from, um, actually, it's in a way, it's kind of all of what we're doing here. If I'm playing something over a title, it's titles coming in, or the streaming service, Kobus, whatever, is coming in from here, but then I'm locally streaming it through that switch to all the other stuff you see on the table, and then way more stuff at home. Um, if, I, if you come to my home, there's a lot more stuff like this all over the place. Um, but I could be also, the, the source for this could be coming from this, um, this little NAS here. It's got a hard drive that has all the music that I've ever bought in my life. Um, this is a digital form anyway. Um, and that can be streamed from this guy to everything else that's on the table. Uh, so two different kinds. So we've got live and on demand. Most of the time we're on demand and we've got internet and local. We can enjoy both of those. Um, Uncompressed versus lossless versus lossy. Well, stop me if this is boring. Um, uncompressed, though, is something we tend to use inside of our house. You can get by with uncompressed audio inside your house because um, you have plenty of bandwidth. Uh, we tend to use lossy uh, compression only for, you know, it used to be very popular because of the storage and the bandwidth were very expensive. And so we kind of figured out, okay, maybe we throw away some of the information, still sounds pretty okay. Um, you'll be able to uh, kind of adapt. But audio files aren't going to be interested in lossy. Lossy is garbage to us. Um, even, if it, even if we couldn't, in a double blind ABX test, tell the difference, it doesn't matter because, like, we'll be worried about it. <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. We'll be like, well, something's not right. And, like, sometimes it's just because you had, you know, locks on your bagel at breakfast time and that messes with the way that your brain ear thing works. It could be any number of reasons. Um, uh, you're, you know, there's, there's so many things that can affect how we perceive sound that are outside of the kind of sound space. And we don't need another kind of thing riding our back. So screw that, we're just gonna do, and, and it doesn't cost much more in terms of storage or bandwidth anymore. So we're gonna do either compressed or we're gonna do lossless. Now we, we, we don't care about lossless. You know, most of us have fast network connections. We can handle downloading things that are uncompressed. But if you flip the coin around and say, okay, I'm a streaming provider and I need to send high resolution or at least pretty okay CD, CD up resolution to you know, 200,000 subscribers or 200 million subscribers at once, I'm gonna wanna compress that a little bit so that I can save 40% you know, on my bandwidth costs. It's gonna be, there's no benefit to streaming uncompressed versus lossless compressed uh, to my clients and it's gonna cost me a ton more money. So, from the streaming provider's perspective, Tidal, Kobus, and all these guys, they're gonna stream lossless to us um, rather than uncompressed. Even if there are some propeller heads in the room who are gonna say, well, you know, wave sounds way better than flack. Um, we can talk about that later too, but for streaming, it doesn't. Um, all right, uh, unless you think it does, and then I'm happy for you. Uh, integrated, yeah, yeah, so I talked about this a little bit before. You have a giant expensive, $10,000, $20,000 computer, these fancy things um, sitting in your room. They can be as quiet as you need them to be and they don't mess up the sound that's in your stereo. Um, but you pay for that uh, isolation being built into that chassis. It's, it's a heroic effort to build a computer that will be quiet enough. And the problem that I have with this, and again, if, if you're made of money, it's not a problem. The problem that I have is like, I would never spend $10,000 on a smartphone or a tablet because I'm not gonna use it that long. And I would never spend for the same token $10,000 or $20,000 on a PC that will be obsolete in I don't know how long. These things change really fast, right? So uh, Core i7 was really quick, you know, uh, well actually still kind of quick. There are a bunch of things that are coming out all the time that'll eclipse those. And so it's, it's, it's where you want to invest your money. If you, you can spend a, a bunch of money on a nice pair of speakers like this, you can use these for 20, 30, 40 years. Same with those amplifiers over there. Digital is not that way. Things, things change really fast. Protocols change fast. So, so you're basically saying Moore's Law takes, a, takes effect. It does. It does with this stuff. Um, the other thing is, like, a render is great, uh, and I don't want to put them down at all, but, like, what if they decide they don't want to, like, release software anymore? They'd retire. The, the, they go do something else. What if they haven't solved the succession planning problem? Now you've got this... $18,000 doorstop. Um, now, a lot of these things are gonna be doorstops anyway, or they'll be given away, but it's just, it's a risk that's higher with digital and computer type technology than it is with some of the more, the more traditional components that we have. You in the back room, very patient. You came all the way from... Uh, our... What about the blue sound no to line? I mean, that's only 500 bucks. Yeah, so you can... You can buy one of those and it'll be okay. 
um, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, um, in other words, it's not going to be too much for most people. If you only could get five years worth of use out of it, you're not going to uh, rend your garments and weep and wail and gnash your teeth or whatever. It's not going to be that horrible. Um, as far as noise emissions goes, I haven't measured it. It's kind of, it kind of rides the uh, edge, I guess, as far as what you uh, would ideally want. Because it does do a fair amount of processing, it can kind of act as a server as well as an endpoint. Um, it has its own ecosystem. It will respond to remote control requests rather than um, having those being sent to some other device that's elsewhere in your house. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to produce a little bit more noise. How well they've handled that at the $500 price point, um, I don't know. There's a fancy device over here that you could use to measure it in theory um, and figure out exactly how well they've done. Um, it's a very convenient solution. It's, um, it, uh, it, 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 it does sort of work with Rune. There's been touch and go as far as compatibility goes. I think that it's a good play if it's something that, and we'll talk about kind of different types of things. I think it's a good play if you just, um, you don't want to mess around with the server part of the whole thing and try to figure out how to set up a, a network. You just want to have one or two of these things in your house. But if you wanted to have music in your entire house, I don't know that Blue OS would be a great way to go. I think it'd be difficult to configure. Uh, I'm not having tried it, but good question. All right, I see somebody scratching their head. I see somebody else with a hand up. Yeah, go ahead. Just a quick one. Uh, as far as the noise is concerned, how far away do these devices need to be from the uh, other devices? That yeah, so the question is, how far away do these devices need to be before noise is not noise anymore? I mean, for me, I, I like them to be on a separate floor or in a different room at least. So you could put it in a closet that's adjacent to or part of the room that you're in. It's better than being in your rack, but the further away that you can, can, the better. And the nice thing with network technology is that in your house, if you, any room that, that is in your house can or either either is or can be wired for Ethernet, and you can put them in the opposite corner. My sort of server closet thing is two floors below where my listening room is, so that's definitely far enough away um, for it to be a, not a problem for me. Uh, all right, good questions. I'm going to skip on. Uh, there's mesh. A mesh type of streaming architecture. So that's more, I think, like what I said, I think I said Blue OS is in there. So Sonos, if you've had their system, they've been doing the stuff since what, 2003? They've got a pretty cool kind of wireless mesh thing. Um, Den and Heos, DTS PlayFi, Blue Sound slash Blue OS. These are all kind of, um, as far as I can tell, with these technologies, and I didn't study a huge amount, but I looked at them a little bit. I've played around with Sonos a lot. They don't have like a central server, um, they just kind of all talk to each other as peers and um, you can in some in some cases you can stream music from one device to another or group them all together there's usually a mobile app that'll let you control them but there's no central server so the thing that makes me uneasy about that and again audiophile nervosa like where's the processing happening is it happening in my room and i don't want it to be there should i be nervous about that or not like I, that makes me crazy and so um, people who are less neurotic than me can probably be very happy with any one of these solutions but um, I'm way out there. I can't do that. Yeah. Okay. So I have a uh, mass and I have things streaming all over my house. Yeah. And I also have my whole Google Home infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to get, how to say, hey, Google, play this on my system. So yeah. If you figure out how to get voice integration for all this stuff, let me know. Um, I think it's coming. I think it's possible. It wouldn't surprise me if the Rune guys figure this stuff out. There are kind of other ways to do that kind of stuff. And Rune's doing some crazy things, possibly with input zones, so that you'd be able to connect all these things together in, in uh, even more bizarre ways. But yeah, I don't, we don't right now, I, and I know that Rune has opened up some of their programming APIs, so there's some people that are working on some smart speaker, smart like echo integration, so that you can tell Rune to play music. Um, some of these other uh, solutions have some of that already. Sonos has that, for example. So if you have Sonos in your environment, you can ask, Alexa to tell Sonos to play something and um, she usually she gets it wrong, but it'll play. <laughs> yeah. You know, can I just continue the discussion about the, the, the Node 2i? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know about people that using the Node just as a streamer mm -hmm. bypass the deck that's built into it. Yeah, right. And if you do that, why would you be worried about Oh, that's a good question. Hold that thought and I will get to it. Um, the question was, if, if, I, if I'm using the Node 2i, maybe the dock in there I'm not so happy with, maybe it's okay, but maybe it's not really great. I got it, you know, Berkeley or whatever, something fancier, a DCS in my deck, in my room, so I want to connect um, the Node 2i to it just over like SPDIF or whatever and run it that way. Um, what's the downside to that versus some of these other solutions up here? We'll talk a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about a little bit, but it's, it's, 
I'm not gonna say that's a wrong way to go or that it's awful. You already know that it sounds great. Um, what I'll just say is for me, I would just be worried a little bit about that box doing more processing than I'd like for it to do because I don't know who the server is. Um, so it's less of, and I, I haven't taken the time to measure it and figure out exactly what its emissions are. If you know and you're happy and you're content, then it's okay. Yeah? You talked earlier about being disappointed with Rune when it was installed in a localized PC. Yeah. Uh, was that because of a combination of the interruptions in the digital stream because of the processing or more so the noise from the digital PC? You know, I don't know why the Rune didn't sound better to me when it was installed locally, but the Rune guys say, don't do that because it won't sound very good. Um, I will talk a little bit about how noise affects digital audio in just a little bit though, and that might uh, expand on that sound. Uh, distributed, noisy bits away from the listening room, so uh, HQ player, LMS, Rune, Flex, Media Server. This is the idea where you, you have a powerful server that you put someplace else in your house. Um, I think the Signalist guys with HQ player were among the first to, to take on this strategy, um, uh, and then other folks have kind of followed suit, but you have a noisy, powerful server that's someplace far away from your listening environment, and then you have super duper quiet and, and uh, outputs that are all over your house and uh, remotes to control it all. Um, I, have, I have one more question. All right. I don't know if I can do this. Okay, so I have multiple systems around my house, and I have JRiver hooked up. Yeah. But the problem I have is if I want to play something from my server to one of my systems, I can play it to that system. Yeah. But I can't play it to all of them all yeah. at the same time. Will Rune do that? It will. It will do that. Rune won't do that. In fact, we're doing that today. As we were listening to that song, I was also playing it simultaneously through this little headphone rig that's up there. So if you put the headphones on, you'd hear the same thing. Um, and you can also do, a lot of times we'll be listening in the kitchen, we'll make dinner, we'll listen to half of a jazz album, and then we want to go upstairs and listen to the rest of it. Rune will let you do a zone transfer of whatever was playing in one zone to uh, a completely different zone. Yeah, hands up. David, just to add to your comment for Leslie's question, you can play different content in different zones simultaneously with Rune as well. Yeah. Exactly. Or you can group two or three to play one thing and two or three to play another. One stick think thing with Rune, because Rune interoperates with so many different technologies, um, the protocols have to be the same for zones that you're going to group together. So if you've got Sonos in your house and you've got these fancy things in your house, you can't group these th fancy things with the Sonos things. They don't use the same protocol. They won't like each other. But all the Sonos things can be grouped together with other Sonos things. And you can do zone transfers from anything. So I can start listening to a song on Sonos, transfer it to... Uh, a Chromecast thing, or a Lin device, or a um, Shout, no, what is it? It's LMS, uh, Squeezebox device, or I could transfer it to one of these uh, sort of more purpose-built room devices and it'll all just kind of work magically. Last type is point-to-point. -point. Um, so this is sort of like, you know, Bubble, UPnP, Apple M Connect players. It's sort of like I've got my phone and I want to stream some music from my phone to this one endpoint end device. Or I think initially the way the JRiver worked as well, you could add some networking devices and you can play some music on JRiver, but, but how, instead of it coming out, the sound coming out of a local USB port or network port, it goes over the network to some other device on the other side. And that's more of a kind of point to point design. Um, I put Ardivarni in that case as well. Ardivarni supports um, a network protocol called DLNA. Um, it's kind of an industry standard thing that's actually a mess. Um, but it, uh, it sort of works. The problem I had with Ardivarni is that if I wanted to play to one zone and then I wanted to switch to someplace else, it was almost impossible. I had to reboot it, uninstall things, take off my socks. It was awful. So I decided I'm not doing that anymore. Um, all right, uh, Q&A music break. Let me look at the questions we have up here. What are things like Sonora, Rendu, Matrix Audio? All right, so what should somebody use instead of their current NUC slash rock thing? So I didn't talk about rock at all, but rock is this rune optimized core, and I'm not gonna remember what it is. Core kit. Anyway, it's a it's a a lot of trip people were having trouble getting this part to work really really well, and then once they got it to work well, they hated it because they had it running on top of Microsoft Windows as I do. So every Tuesday it got rebooted and their music broke or something else would break, and they're like, I want to come home from work. I want to sit in a chair. I want to have a scotch and I want to listen to music. I don't want to screw around with Windows updates and all the rest of that stuff. Or like they get logged out and Rune would shut down and they got to log back in. And they got to find a keyboard and by the time you say all those bad words, like your blood pressure's through the roof, even the best music is not going to get you back down from that. And so they're like, I just don't want to do this anymore. So Rune's 
uh, Rune, Rune Lab's solution to that was, well, we'll just give you this very, very simple operating system. Um, we don't care, we don't, we're not interested in supporting it on 6,000 different PC platforms because they're all a mess. So we're only gonna support it on certain models of Intel NUC, um, which is a small, small computer, even smaller than that one. Well, we're gonna support it on those with a certain configuration, with a certain setup, and they go through all these steps, those 39 steps or 37 steps on their website for building one of these things. Um, but if you're good with a screwdriver and have some patience, it's not too bad. And you put their operating system on it and then it just works. It, it, they handle all the updates, it never reboots, it just, it's very, very reliable. Um, and so the question is, what can I do that's better than that? Well, what you can do that's better than that, not necessarily in terms of sound quality, but in terms of convenience, Rune makes their own thing called Nucleus. Nucleus? I don't know how to say it. Nucleus. Somebody called Nucleus. Anyways, um, that is a basically a sort of fancy milled aluminum audiophile uh, cosmetic um, uh, box similar to that. The nice thing about that, those things are running around, I think, $1,200 to $2,500, depending on the configuration. The nice thing about those is if you're not a computer person and you don't want to get out a screwdriver and even build this thing once, you buy their product, it sits in, sits in your closet or someplace in your house, and they are responsible for all the maintenance and updates. Now, if they get bored and decide they don't want to do this anymore, it's the same risk as our render, but instead of being out $18,000, you're out $2,000 or whatever. So it's not it's not super horrible, but then you don't have to be a computer person at all. You connect power, you connect a network cable, you throw it in a closet, and then you forget about it. You never look at it again. Um, and uh, so that's a pretty nice solution. Sound quality wise, so I mean, this is kind of the point of streaming. We get the, the things that tended to affect sound quality with digital before were things that are close to the system. The closer you get to your preamp, the closer you get to your amplifier, the more noise sneaks in and messes up the experience. Um, we solve this in streaming, and this is why this is so cool for us audio files. We solve this in streaming by taking that noisy crap, the switch and the thing with the ears sticking up and the computer, the little purple thing, whatever that is, put those someplace else in a closet, in the garage, someplace far, far away from our audio system, and we never look at them or hear them is the idea. Um, and because of that uh, proximity, we, we get similar results, or better maybe even in some cases than some big fancy thing that we used to put in our component rack. Uh, so. Uh, now people say, well, I, I listen to, um, what's up there? There's Inuis and some other, some other people, I listen to this and I compared it to Rune's Nucleus and I compared it to uh, a Windows PC and I established a preference between one of those things. I don't know what to tell you, right? Um, uh, they're, they're, we, we, can, we can debate you know, objectivist versus subjectivist. If you have a prefer preference and you like things, one of the things you have to remember is this hobby is a pleasure hobby, right? So. If you like a certain thing and you can afford it and it doesn't make a damn bit of difference, it doesn't matter to anybody else, then you buy it. It, make, it gives you pleasure. It's, it's your thing. If you're, whoever's having the most fun in this hobby is the one who's winning, not you know, who's right or like who's you know, ABX testing and auditory skills have reached a certain level that they've uh, see, achieved transcendence and whatever the hell else you are trying to do. None of that matters, right? So you, you, you have to make yourself happy. And if you can't be happy, with a blue piece of crap PC in your closet, you'd have to have a big you know, aluminum, extruded aluminum chassis, even though it doesn't make any difference from a sound quality perspective, then you, you do you. You go and put that fancy thing in your closet and, and you be happy, because that's what we want to do here. Uh, happy. What else? Uh, a lot of add-ons. Yeah, add-ons. Um, there are some software add-ons. I know for a while I was a big fan of this Fidelizer. Fidelizer. Anyway, it was like a, Windows computer operating system optimizing thing that would try to make a computer, a Windows computer less noisy so that it sounded better as a digital transport. Um, the solution is to get the stupid computer out of the listening room. Um, but it helped a little bit. It was like 70 bucks or whatever. It wasn't a big deal. There are a whole bunch of other things. There's little USB quiet me down decrapifier things that you can put between uh, a, a transport and a DAC. There's, there's a whole table full of some things here, some fancy network cables. Well, I think, I think you try those things and you try to figure out what makes the most sense if you're inclined to do that. If you're not, follow kind of normal recommendations and um, find a way to be happy with them. Uh, but I don't think you, I think in the, in the streaming world you can, just like every other part of this audio fire world, you can spend as much as you want to spend, but I don't think you have to, to to have an enjoyable experience unless spending is part of that experience for you, <laughs> which I think it is in some cases. I'm, I'm not judging, it's okay. Uh, what are all the pieces you need? Uh, we talked about some of that before. I gave you some examples at the beginning. Talk to me afterwards if you've got more questions. Um, I, I have, if I can remember how computers work, I will find some music. 
Uh, this one's fun. Could you show the, the Arun path? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, this, this guy's clued in here, so I'm going to show you this path thing. Um, it's, it's much less sort of circuitous than what I outlined on the table. One of, one of the things that Rune and some of the better media player softwares like to do is, well, you're like, well, I have music that's coming into my computer and it's coming out of the computer and going someplace else, but what kind of processing is happening? Um, in the early days of computer audio, Windows, the Windows mixer, kernel mixer was always resampling the audio because whenever you get a beep on your email, we want the sampling rate from that beep to match the sampling rate of whatever you're playing because otherwise you can't kind of mix them together. So it just resampled everything to 48 kilohertz. It didn't matter. Well, we all listen to CDs, so it's 44.1. So we resampled everything from 44.1 to 48 on a computer that's not very powerful using algorithms that are pretty crappy. And then we're like, yeah, why does computer audio sound so bad? Um, but now there's a signal path. So again, audiophile nervosa, you're like, well, I think that sounds good, but I don't know if it sounds good. <laughs> now you can look at the signal path and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I feel better. It sounds good. It should be okay. The signal path is fine. So it's mostly for people, well, like you and me now, right, that, that can't be content listening to music and just enjoying the music. We've got to know, well, that, that nothing has gone uh, on to mess it up. So here we go. There we go. Signal path. That might be a little loud, so I'll play with that in a minute. Good. Down, up, 